When we hauled out Contango in Ecuador, we thought we'd be able to keep it there for up to 12 months. But unfortunately, customs would only let us keep it for nine months, and that conflicted with my teaching schedule. So we had to move Contango before New Year's. Here at the Porta Lucia Yacht Club here on Thanksgiving Day 2016. That was the only day I could get off to prep the boat to give us enough time to make it to Hivoa. Uh, we, uh, I had not seen the boat in almost five months. Hey everybody, this is Linus. I'm here at the New Orleans Yacht Club in the Municipal Yacht Harbor. Just came here to pick up some supplies in New Orleans. All right, we got some spare parts for the engine. Picked up the new Bimini. Looks great. They did a good job. So this is the this is the day before Thanksgiving. So it took probably about 40 minutes to find this uh, external parking lot. All the lots were full here in uh, New Orleans. I still have plenty of time. I was launching my new book, Slow Boat to Cuba, on the Thanksgiving holiday weekend and it hit number one while I was in the Miami airport. I had a celebratory mojito for its great debut in the Amazon sailing category. Uh, the rigging and all the stainless stanchions and everything else, uh, I think never got all the salt off of it. I, I washed off the water with the water here at the Yacht Club uh, before I left. But that did not, I guess, get off all the salt and there's, there's really noticeable rust on every stainless part. It's not as bad as we had in uh, going to Providencia where the kind of the rust was raining down so you don't see the rust stains. Uh, but uh, I'm not convinced, you know, being here for a long period is, is the best thing for a boat. It is nice that it's dry, uh, but if you've got any salt stains on your, any salt on your uh, stainless, it could accelerate the rusting because you never get rain. Whereas like New Orleans or uh, Panama, you're constantly getting rain. I, I'm not convinced that we've had a solid rain in Ecuador uh, or Contango's had a solid rain since we went through the ITCZ, ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, on the way to Ecuador from Panama. So, the other thing is the decks are very, uh, have a lot of dirt. Is that there's a lot of dirt on the decks, and uh, I think either I did it, or when they messed with the wheel for the cutlass bearing, uh, they might have accidentally turned on the VHF outside and battery 2 was completely down to nothing so I'm charging it now we're gonna see if it it, it has any juice in it or what uh, but uh, that was a real downer we may have to get a replacement battery I am kinda doubt we'll be able to get an AGM we'll probably have to settle for a lead acid if we decide to replace it uh, but I'm not 100% we will. I'm still trying to figure out a place that sells auto batteries, but I'm told there are a lot here based on the the soggy pause guide, but then it didn't didn't actually say where they are. I was kind of looking around the main drag today and I didn't see anything that looked obvious to me, but uh, maybe I'll ask around in my bad space. Okay, so I found a battery place, but uh, I think they're all lead acid. It's hard to tell. I decided against buying a lead acid to replace my AGM battery. Other than that, uh, we're doing pretty good uh, in terms of things working. I didn't really see anything working. Okay, it looks like the 7 8 nut and half nut are the ones that fit. And those will be the, for the spare propeller. Cutlass bearing is fixed. Now we just need to put on the zinc. All right, tightening down the zinc. Seems tight. All right, we got the prop on, new cutlass bearing, new zinc. 
ready to splash. Okay, I think they're coming ready to go. Once we were back in the water, I was able to do engine maintenance and visit the fuel dock. All right, so I got fuel uh, yesterday. We got hauled back into the water, and that went pretty well. It took a good long time. So when I opened up the heat exchanger, it didn't have anything at the top, uh, no evidence of it, but there was some cooling water antifreeze in the freshwater system. Got about two liters out. Yeah, so these starboard side drains, you can see the them going into the the bottle down there. They were not draining, but the port side drain, which is under the alternator there, uh, it was working. I got the two liters out there. So the Prestone green that I bought in Panama is a different color green. A deep green the stuff I buy in the US is kind of a green yellow all right so change in the impeller here I'm just taking note of the way that it turns although I think if it will actually automatically turn uh, the correct way this impeller looks pretty good but I'm gonna put in the new one Before the end of the holiday weekend, I flew back to Louisiana so I could teach the last week of class. A lot of auctions on eBay, uh, and I got tired of losing auctions for water makers that I knew I'd have to replace the membrane. Membrane costs 360, you know, and you get in a used water maker that hasn't been serviced regularly, you're pretty sure that the membrane is going to be bad maybe other things will be bad so it just didn't seem worth it to bid high for those things you know it, and the other problem is you get the pure ones versus the Katie den the, the pure are much older even though that's the parent company uh, and the uh, those old ones have a different design and I couldn't find a manual to figure out how to take out the membrane I wasn't sure if the, the old ones work with the new membranes that you can buy for 360 so if you can't buy a new membrane can't take it apart then you really need the newer models and the stuff you find on eBay are probably going to need a new membrane. so this is the rental car that I got I think I was too easy going when I picked it up because this is really a bad rental car it smelled like smoke it has a bullet hole in it first one I've ever had with a bullet hole it came with this big dent. There was a sticky stuff all over it. So in general, I, I regret getting this rental car, uh, but hopefully it'll turn out okay. I left the uh, all the problems with it in the the seat. It, I think you know, in retrospect, it was clear that the the lady in Lafayette wanted to shift a crappy car onto uh, New Orleans, maybe not just on to me but I probably should have pitched a fit and asked. it drove okay once you got past the smell about to sell me a one day pass for the Admiral's Lounge so I am lounging on the floor below the Admiral's Lounge for free So 
I'm at uh, the best pharmacy you'll probably find uh, before you get to Pete. It's probably the best you'll find in the South Pacific, I can't say. But uh, here in uh, La Libertad, Ecuador, you definitely want to stop at uh, the Fibeca Pharmacia and get all your kind of uh, CVS, Wal Walgreens, uh, pharmacy type needs. Uh, you know, I think in all my travels uh, outside the U.S. by boat, I never saw one as good as this. Uh, so, pretty happy I found it. It's also right next to the Super Maxi in there, the tiny little strip mall where the Super Maxi is, which is the best uh, supermarket in La Libertad, Salinas area. Our new crew member, Sahia, helped me with the provisioning in the morning before departure. You think we got enough? You think we got enough? See the cabs are always waiting. All right, so we're coming back from the grocery store right now. Ben was the second crew member to join me that day, and he helped us pack up and leave. All right, he's still happy now. <laughs> 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 Episode 29 guests on the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. Tasha and Ryan of SV Cheeky Monk convinced me that pet regulations in French Polynesia made it impossible to bring Daly along. Jan and Sophie would also be sitting out this trip. All right, it's me and Sayana. First night. We're still trying to figure out what the watch schedules are. We're not going to talk about what happened in the marina. <laughs> we survived, the boat is still floating. Alright, so this is the start of day two out of uh, La Libertad, Ecuador. We left about 4.30 yesterday, and uh, now it's about 4.30 on Sunday. Uh, only 3,400 miles to go. <laughs> we're just uh, we've been struggling with the the, uh, the wind direction. Uh, the wind direction uh, makes it so that being close haul means we have to go 330, 300 degrees or so. I think we're going about 280, 290 right now. We want to be going 260 probably for the rum line. And so uh, the winds are pushing us kind of farther north than we want to go. We want to start heading south as soon as possible. Supposedly the winds are better south and the waves are uh, better. Uh, the waves are going to be about the same everywhere, but uh, the, the currents are going to be better north. But the, I think the differences are so small that you really want to uh, handle the winds. There's supposed to be some sort of wind hole once we get to the Galapagos if we're too close to them so I want to avoid that in about a week uh, the we've actually kind of struggled uh, in terms of we felt uh, seasick and I've never thrown up on a sailboat before this passage and I thought the weather was pretty mild the seas were not anything bigger than we had seen over the summer um, it's not, it, so I, I guess I can only attribute it to the, the lack of sea legs or something like that. It, it could also be that we kind of started out with night passages right off the bat and maybe we needed day passages to get our sea legs. Uh, so hopefully we'll be okay though. We're all wearing our, our patches so we, uh, sh we should be able to do it and it's, uh, like people are drinking water, so that's that's also good. And uh, uh, Ben here has been eating, and doing okay. So uh, the uh, I think that's it for today. 
Oh, oh yeah. Uh, let's see. The issues that I was working on were uh, the fixing the solar panels because uh, they they kind of their connections came loose. And we have we have the aft solar panels on right now, and I'll, I'll test the, the side line next time. We've mostly been running the engine to charge the batteries when they start to blow. So I think we have you know we have enough fuel probably to to charge. Uh, you know, a quarter of the passage, so I think that should be enough, even if the solar fails us, the wind generator is doing pretty well. Don't forget to subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing. This episode was brought to you by viewers like you and Mantis Anchor. Support the Slow Boat Sailing YouTube channel on patreon.com slash slowboatsailing.